An FA Cup special on the big match today, featuring Chelsea against Ipswich, Derby County against Spurs, and a great bonus, Millwall's magnificent victory at Everton, coming your way now. Yes, welcome again, and that's quite a lineup on another great day of FA Cup football. And do you know the best news of all today? That attendances were up by 72,000 on the fourth round of a season ago. So this is how we go then. Chelsea against Ipswich. And Hunter was right in there, and Hunter's in there again, and that was another chance for Ipswich. Derby County against Spurs. And Gibble with a return. And the crowd roar on that one. Everton against Millwall. Waiting to take the free kick. And what a bonus that is with some truly marvellous action right through the next hour. There were in fact over 36,000 fans on the three sides of the Stamford Bridge ground yesterday, which is where we go first of all for Chelsea against Ipswich. It has the look of a well-balanced tie with Chelsea's home advantage against a young Ipswich side that's fourth in the table. Four of the Ipswich youngsters who helped to take them there. One of them is David Johnson, a striker formerly with Everton. He's 21 years old. Also 21 is the England under-23 star, Trevor Wymark. Then, in addition to those two, there's also the swift winger, Mick Lambert, another 21-year-old. But they say that the brightest young star of all is this fellow, Kevin Beatty, only 19 a month ago. Those, then, are some of the players that Chelsea must face this afternoon. Chelsea now with Peter Hausman back in their side for the first time since before Christmas. He's been injured. The only other change is that Marvin Hinton is, one of the, is the substitute. Uh, Ipswich, meanwhile, they come to Stamford Bridge unchanged, a side that does credit to their manager, Bobby Robson, but one that comes with a very poor record at Chelsea. So there's quite a psychological barrier for them to break down first of all. The crowd is in good spirits. The cup always seems to do that. And some of them get better views than others. Here's a fellow up on the crane on that to where the new Chelsea stand is going to be. The crowd then now waiting for referee Gordon Hill of Leicestershire. So Ipswich kick off, defending the goal to our left, on a ground where they've never won, and indeed have taken only one point out of seven league visits, and were beaten 3-0 in the only cup game between the two sides here, that was a way back in 67-68. But Ipswich coming now in a ground then where they really do well, but their form is good, they've won five of their last six against a Chelsea side that really have wavered for most of this season. A low cross there, and Weimark was there first, and Hamilton, just a fraction past that far post as it came across the goal from Brian Hamilton. Kevin Beattie, knowing it away, into touch, Chelsea's throw. Well, Hollins normally takes a long throw from these sort of positions, I would have thought with his shoulder he might not risk it. So, Houseman to Garner, straight over his own head. Kemba jumping hopefully, well that rather miscued from Hollins and it nearly fell for Kemba, now it's with Hudson, and now again with Hudson, will he get a shot in? No! It began to look quite promising there for Chelsea on the edge of the Ipswich box. Kevin Beattie. striking with a lot of pace to him and he's got a corner so a corner to Ipswich Harper suggesting that Beattie goes up while Webb is down on the ground and may be in need of a bit of attention Colin Harper's come forward for this one and uh, David Johnson the number nine who won the corner with a lot of pace there against uh, Dempsey Scored six goals for Ipswich already since he arrived from Everton. So David Webb's all right. 
Ipswich now getting the corner. Peter Morris taking it. Get up, get up. And Phillips only half getting to it. And they're trying to tip it back again, just on the top of there from Lambert. A nice little chip there that just under the roof of the Chelsea net after Phillips had lost it. Towards Lambert on the far side, turned back for Harper. Hamilton ducking underneath that one. Dempsey. Ipswich beginning to look a little more dangerous when they uh, set these attacks going now. Morris. Trying to get a 1-2 going there with Weimark. Morris again, back for Harper. Everybody now bar the Ipswich goalkeeper in the Chelsea half of the field. Weimark. And he's gone past Webb beautifully, Trevor Weimark. Play back again there for Lambert. And run right across there, and a chance that certainly fell at the feet of Johnson. As Chelsea were pulled one way and the other, first by Weimark, and the chance eventually falling here to David Johnson. And Johnson missing it. Just a little annoyed with himself for that. And David Webb going off the field now for a bit of treatment. So Chelsea at the moment down to ten men. And it looks as though David Webb is staying off and Marvin Hinton is coming on. Well, Webb had been an outstanding player in this Chelsea defence. He certainly had a chequered career against Ipswich because in this corresponding game last year he played in goal. And against Ipswich, at Ipswich last season, he scored a couple of goals himself. But now he's off, and Marvin Hinton, an experienced defender in his own right, is on. Garner getting ahead to it, and Hollins! But in fact, the linesman was flagging for an offside decision against Peter Osgood. I'm sure John Hollins is not going grey, he's obviously hit his head on the white line. <laughs> Chelsea's form this season must have made one or two of their supporters go a little grey, I would think. Only two wins in their last nine home games. Hudson. Falling, though, for Villeneuve. Harper. And Hinton getting it away. Get a substitute ball as it goes into where Chelsea's new stand is being built. It's Mick Lambert. And Lambert again. Johnson letting it out. Weimark with a chance. And it's not away yet. Lambert right across that Chelsea goal. And Hausman with a chance now to get it away. And in fact, turning it off, Weimark for a Chelsea throw. And now it's Hudson for Chelsea. Fair looking cross there, Garner rising for it, Hausman trying to get in, Hollins also! And there was no offside, although Chelsea thought, or at least uh, the Ipswich supporters thought so. But he really didn't get a hold of that one. And that really could have been a very expensive miss for Chelsea from John Hollins. Hudson. Kemba didn't know much about that one. But he knew a little more of that one and he's found Harris. The long ball forward, Garner's all right, he's onside. Now, is that it? It is indeed! Paul Garner, 1-0. Just when Chelsea needed it. The long ball coming out of the defence and Garner just got to it and flicked it over the head of David Best. 1-0 to Chelsea. Bill Garner's fifth goal of the season and Chelsea ahead with eight minutes to go to half-time. Just when it looked as though Ipswich were beginning to put a rhythm together looking so solid and dependable there's Kevin Beatty but a foul by Osgood on him 
if Fritz will have such a good defensive record in 28 first division games this season they've conceded only 28 goals well David Best came as quickly as he could and it wasn't just quick enough Hinton rising for this one and Johnson going in and it looked like a handball there and it's still not in Morris right in there and Locke getting it away only as far as Mills and certainly there have been more scares for Chelsea in their area than there have so far for Ipswich in theirs and yet Ipswich are behind and there's Osgood finding Kemble and now for Houseman Garner's right up there too played never where Garner could get to it though but Chelsea get a throw Harris Osgood lurking in the area again but not reaching him Kevin Beattie away and it's with Mick Lambert Locke half came but didn't come uh, and commit himself enough Peter Morris Harper Morris Lambert Harper hitting it first time Weimar trying to get to it Johnson who can be very dangerous on the edge of the area there played the short one to Phil Yearn BT leaving his head and looking for the man who was unmarked and it was Harper and Harper took too long and Chelsea got a throw Garner who was right back there to help the defence in all honesty they've not had too much to cheer at Stamford Bridge this season but 1-0 ahead in the cup tie Hudson but now Hunter Weimar to Lambert yes the foul by Hudson gives Ipswich the free kick the wall back again Morris going to take the free kick for Ipswich the run towards the near post by some three or four players and Hunter was right in there and Hunter's in there again and that was another chance for Ipswich that went by the board and there have been at least three now in the first half very close to goal that have not been taken Garner with the header to Hudson, played in first time, but the whistle goes for half time before Osgood can get to it. The only goal of the first half then being scored by Bill Garner for Chelsea, putting them 1 0 into the lead in this fourth round cup tie. Still a lot to come on the big match this afternoon, but the half time score at Stamford Bridge is Chelsea 1, Ipswich 0, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Bill Garner, who scored the Chelsea goal in 33 minutes. 34 seconds. So Chelsea then get us away at the start of the second half, leading by a goal to nil. Having won this uh, match here in the league 2 0 and earlier this season, and now they might be in with another chance as Garner gets a shot. Garner has scored his second goal, and within 10 seconds of the start of the second half, Chelsea, in fact, make the scoreline the same as it was in September when Ipswich came here and lost 2 0 in the league. 
Well, it was bobbling about there long enough, and Best was unsighted, and it just about reached the back of the net. In fact, it happened so quickly, poor David Best there, it happened so quickly that Bobby Robson and Dave Sexton hardly got onto the ground after half-time to see it. But Chelsea then, 2-0 ahead, Hinton. And now Hudson. But here's Harper for Ipswich. Mildern. And Mills to Hamilton. Towards Johnson. Oh my goodness, that was very nearly put back into the path of Johnson by Marvin Hinton. Well, it gives Chelsea just a little bit of breathing space after their troubles in the first half when they lost David Webb injured. Hunter towards Lambert. Hudson with the ball going off Harper for Chelsea's throw. Osgood, Hudson and Osgood. Quite enough though, and Hudson can't quite get it off can he? Yes he can, and he crossed it well. But Mills a little too high for him. Houseman turning it back again. This looks a lot better from Chelsea. Harris. Houseman going in. But uh, yes, the referee quite right. He was pushing in on uh, Mick Mills. So Ipswich get a kick. And when they were 1-0 down and making chances in the first half, you would have thought the match is anything but lost for them. Now they've got a struggle. Johnson. Good long shot there, and a good save, and it needed to be a good save from Johnson. By John Phillips. Really let that one go with his right foot, and uh, Phillips flicking out his arm, turning it over for a corner to Ipswich. Oh, a strange corner that. And it goes straight to Peter Hausman. Turned on for Peter Osgood. Now this is a chance for a really swift counter break by Chelsea. Hudson. There's it for Osgood again. And away goes Osgood and down he goes. Free kick. Quick break again out of defence by Chelsea, although they were helped by a very badly placed corner. But they began to take full advantage of it. David Best. Like a cannon hot bricks on that goal line behind the wall. Because uh, there's the wall and Hollins and Hudson are poised over the ball. Hollins, who is a fairly swift striker of the ball, but in fact it's Hudson now towards Garner. Garner, of course, is a man who is looking for his hat-trick now. Chelsea get a corner. Kevin Beatty, number six, right back there, marking Osgood. Dempsey, the number five, has come up for Chelsea. And the crowd again getting behind Chelsea as Hudson takes the corner for them. And Mills had to nod that one away. Harris turning it back again, a deceptive looking one. The whistle gone from Gordon Hill. An infringement there by the eager Chelsea attackers. And he really has missed nothing this afternoon, this referee. Weimark losing it to Hudson, but Hudson in turn almost presenting it to Ipswich. And finally it's number 10, Kemba, turning it back. To Phillips. Garner again winning an important ball in the air. And it's Osgood. Played in the game for Garner and not it on. What a lovely piece of play. He's winning so many good balls in the air, Bill Garner, and he really is working out a fine understanding with Osgood as well. 
that fell rather luckily there for Gary Law. Oh, he's taking full use of it, and down he goes, brought down by Harper. A professional foul, they call it, and really it does no credit on uh, Colin Harper. Gary Lott really taking full advantage of that, twisting past a couple of defenders and finally there was no way past Harper's challenge. Best, I think, saying he wants four men in the Ipswich Wall. That's right, four. At the moment he's only got three. But I think they might well persuade Mick Mills to join them. He wants the wall a little to the left, and now he wants it a little to the right. And he's only got three men in it. And they're not back the full ten yards. Now they are. Hudson again letting this one go for Hollins. Driven through the wall! Superbly pushed round, though, by Best. Hollins, a master at that sort of free kick. And with that sort of free kick, given every chance now that referees are insisting that the wall goes back the ten yards, and that's a point that... Gordon Hill really is insisting upon this afternoon. Hudson playing it wide again for Hollins. Got Houseman up in close support as well, but preferred to look for Dempsey. And with good reason, Garner, and tipped over! Garner for a moment saw his hat-trick. But it was foiled at the last as he tried again just to dink it over Best's head by David Best lifting a fist and tipping it over. Well, it's been a good afternoon for him for all that. And it's Peter Houseman now with the corner. Curling it in again under the Ipswich crossbar. Osgood going for it. The referee decided that he was going for the man rather than for the ball. Jumping blindly. It's with Harper. Marvin Hinton. That looked a perfectly good challenge by Hinton on Bounderson. But the referee thought there was something else to it and he's given a free kick to Ipswich. And it's Harper taking it for Ipswich. Houseman away to Osgood. Back for Hudson. And a long way back for Phillips. Houseman. Harris. Houseman really fighting with that ball this afternoon and he's played it on again for Bill Garner. Now has Garner got the speed to go past Beattie? Down he goes, nothing given. Well he half slipped again and he hasn't even given a free kick. No, he's given a goal kick, I think. Although he wasn't taken as a goal kick. And I'm sure that uh, Gordon Hill's reading of that was that it was half a slip and Garner tried to make it look a hell of a lot worse than it was. And he's really giving Peter Osgood uh, a few words as well, because Osgood certainly felt that it was a, that it was a penalty. But it's another example, I think, of where players, in trying to make it look worse than it is, in fact deny themselves any chance of a penalty because referees turn a blind eye to that sort of thing. Harris. Garner turned in again nicely by him. He's winning so many balls in the air. Hamilton to Weimark. Lock getting in there first. Hunter away. And Ipswich unable at the moment to put their game together as they did for so long in the first half. But here's Vildure. Kemper, and there's the ball for Harper. 
and a call. That has got to be the sign for them all to come up. Beat is coming up, Hunter's coming up. There's Kevin Beatty, number six. And Alan Hunter, number five. Only Mick Mills is staying back. Morris. Bill Jern trying to get in with his head. And Hamilton on the turn! Oh, and a tremendous save! By John Phillips. That looked as though it was destined for that far corner. But Phillips flung himself superbly. Von Brian Hamilton shaking his head. He can hardly believe it himself. But it's a corner instead of a goal. And now it's Harris. Who I think was probably standing too close to that corner situation. So he might well find that the corner's got to be taken again. That's what the referee says. So Ipswich now get a corner. Houseman. And it's Mills for Ipswich. That Chelsea penalty area is so crowded. Hamilton onside, turned back. Lambert, just over. That was incredible. That was astounding because it looked as though it needed a merest touch. And then he hit down on it well, did Lambert. And somehow hit it first bounce over the Chelsea crossbar. Bobby Robson on the right, the manager who's done so much for Ipswich. Must be wondering himself how it is his side of two goals down. Weimar. Lambert. Oh, we got that across well and it's not away by any means. Weimar, the back header, Hamilton! And again, they are making these chances near the goal and just failing to capitalise on them. The whistle goes. Ipswich have never won at Stamford Bridge and they haven't won here today because Bill Garner's two goals, one in the first half and the second within 10 seconds of the start of the second has really killed them off. Ipswich, who've never got beyond the fifth round of the cup, leave it this time in the fourth round and it's Chelsea who go through. And the final scoreline at Stamford Bridge reading Chelsea 2, Ipswich 0. So that Stamford Bridge hoodoo still hangs over Ipswich and the injuries continue to pile up on Chelsea. David Webb incidentally told me afterwards that his injury was something behind the kneecap but uh, thankfully it wasn't as bad as he first thought. So then what about Chelsea against Ipswich? Here's Jimmy Hill. Well, I have to admit it was a lucky day for Chelsea yesterday and a lucky day too, particularly for Bill Garner. You may remember when uh, Arsenal played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, uh, it, he had quite a good game then and we had some pictures for you to show in the big match, but unfortunately we ran out of time and we weren't able to show them. But he was so determined to get himself on the programme, he played so well yesterday, apart from the two goals, he gets his chance now with these pictures of his performance. He's particularly good in the air, but also he's proving how clever and skillful he's becoming when he's controlling the ball, as he did there when laying the ball back to Harris. His brain has woken up to first division pace. Watch this dummy. He knew there that Hollins was running in behind him and deliberately let the ball go. But of course it's that heading ability that is so useful to Chelsea. Watch here as he makes a chance from Hollins. Demps his kick stretches in the air and Hollins has that volley. You can probably see Osgood run out from an offside position there because it wouldn't have been allowed even if it had gone in the net. But then of course the goal, that's a good first time ball there for Harris, searching for that space beyond the defence and it left him with this chance. And he takes it really well, it's just the pace that he gets into it, the right height to take it over the keeper's head and just enough pace to beat the chasing defenders. And then of course, seconds after half time, came the second goal. And just look at this beautiful header here, how he jumps, stretches his neck, lays it off to Osgood, running on his right. Osgood decides to let the Ipswich defenders lay it back again to Garner, but here's that wobbly right foot. Off the knee, I thought that was, but watch how many bounces there are, three, I think, before it actually went in the net. It wasn't deflected, but it was a little bit of luck for Chelsea. And finally, he almost got a hat-trick. There's Dempsey laying back the ball well first time there, and he goes in and tries the same trick again, but this time, Best was ready and brings off a fine save to present him, prevent him getting a hat-trick. 
Not a bad £80,000 worth for Chelsea. But what about Ipswich? It wasn't really their day for the fans who were watching. I must say it's the first time I've seen them for some time and I was very impressed with the team that Bobby Robson has built up. I like their crisp style, a little reminiscent of how Fulham played uh, when Haynes and Robson were there. Nobody hesitating with the ball but keeping it moving all the while, running into position for each other as they do with this move. And in the end, of course, we see the skill of Weimark there cleverly beat his defender. What a beautiful move that was. And finally, there's the first shot there from Lambert and the miscue from Johnston on the fast post. But a really first-class move from Ipswich, showing there the style of play that's taken them well up that first division table. But the luck wasn't theirs. And even in the second half, when they were struggling to get a goal to get themselves back in the game, they had this type of chance. A crossover partially saved by Phillips and that ball just wouldn't bounce straight and drop into the roof of the net. And also I, they had what I thought was the best save of the season against them. This was from John Phillips. It's a messy old start to it and you'll see the spin on that ball as it pitches now which caught Chelsea defenders out. Watch that spin. But in the end it's Hamilton who comes in and really slushes that ball towards the top corner. And what about that for a save? Going away from the goalkeeper all the while, as good a save as I've seen this season. So much for Chelsea, so much for Ipswich. But the real heroes of the day, uh, really, I thought, were the two H's. Peter Hausman, who proved how dangerous it is to underrate him as a player, a really fine team player, uh, competitive, skillful, and going for his team all the while. And, of course, Marvin Hinton, who came on for David Webb and was probably the coolest player on the field and had a really superb game. Those those two things went for Chelsea yesterday. What else went? On Saturday I predicted that I'd had a message from the Gypsies to tell me that Chelsea would win that match because I didn't think there was any other reason. Well, not only were the Gypsies ready enough to pass on the fact that Chelsea would win, but they also went out of their way to make it true and they did just that. Well, we didn't get a clue from the Gypsies about our second cup tie today, but I can tell you it surely goes down as one of the most exciting of the day. You get a big ration now of Derby County against Spurs. Fantastic atmosphere there. 37,000 crammed their way into the baseball ground. There was room for ATV's cameras. Commentator Hugh John. Spurs are wearing the yellow shirts with the white shorts. Davis up well against England. Now it's McGovern. Early ball. O'Hare feeding McGovern again. The cross Goalkeeping by Pat Jennings. Fine, fine goalkeeping by Pat Jennings, and there was no foul. Bill Zane getting the flick on, aiming for Chivers. Tries to steer it back to Coates. Perryman. Peters. Bill was a bit of a miss kick. Farnan out to Gimmel. O'Hare has to play it. McGovern to his right. No, he lets it go for Webster first. Long through one for Roger Davis to chase. Mike England with it. And he won it off him. Oh, he did that well. Tremendously well. What confidence this big tall boy's got. What a cheeky player this tall lad is. Only as far as Coates. Broken again for O'Hare. Hennessy, Kinnear down. Shivers way back, too far back. Gemmel against Pediment, and again, Pediment wins it. Gemmel again now. It's opening up in front of him, and Beale just gets one boot in front. Scoops it back for Jennings. Good covering by Phil Beale. Knowles now on the break. Pratt. Knowles aiming for Gilzean and his arm for Peters now. Oh, that was a chance. Beautiful little move created by good running between Pratt and Knowles. Finally, Gilzean and Chivers setting it up for this man, Peters. And he got the steam hammer in action. But the uh, target sights were not smack on the posts. McFarlane, punching it in there, Beal punching it out, McFarlane up again, and again, almost head tennis, Peters, very tight situation, and a top for Hector, and he's onside! Great goalkeeping by Jennings!
McFarlane knocks it long. Davis getting it in the back from England. Pratt knocks the ball away but doesn't get booked for it. McGovern for Webster. Roger Davis knocks it down and tries one. Oh, he did that beautifully too. Gemmell still with it. Gilzine away. Pratt roughed out by O'Hare. Hector McGovern chased by Pratt. Now Beale. Still McGovern. Oh, and a great save again by Jennings. John McGovern gave it the stick. Jennings, tremendous one-handed save. In an incredible situation that he could hardly see the ball. Goes in forward. Webster just had enough off Coates. Hennessy, oh, that's a bad ball. Peters wins it. Perryman. Peters going for the return, and so is Gilzine. And Peters! Great goalkeeping then. Scooping it away. Off Peters, and then the rebound coming in off Chivers, and Colin Bolton is injured. Certainly saved his side there. Nish now for Derby. And again, the pressure building on the Spurs' back line. McFarland, Shivers comes to challenge. Gemmell didn't really mean to aim it that way. Hennessy. Davis lurking out on the touchlines. Kevin Hector, a fine ball for him. And again, the Spurs close everything up. Oh, here, can he turn? Tries to lay it back. Gemmell. And again, it was the man Perriman who was in there. Todd has overrun it. No, he hasn't. Webster in. If anybody heard his call this afternoon, it's Steve Perryman. Colin Tom. Hector. Knowles right up his backside. Hector. Got his turn in. Peters out. McFarlane. Surely this pressure must lead to something. McGovern. Hector. And Gemma with the return. And the crowd roar on that one. But Archie Gemma smacks it. Just over the bar. Jennings was really leaping towards the sky with that one. And still the guardian angel that sits on the shoulders of Pat Jennings must be perched on his crossbar this afternoon. Still no goals in that Spurs net and they've been soaking up punishment for practically the whole of 25 minutes of this half. There's the foul, which holds the game up, and Alan Gilzine turns away, heads for the bench. And Sasio figure of Jimmy Pierce. Having his boots examined before he comes on as a substitute. On my watch, 31 minutes of the second half gone. Gilzine getting a big hand from this crowd. Good, honest, skillful footballer. Lips out of the game. To allow the dashing energies of Jimmy Pierce to come on. Cyril Knowles, number three with a free kick. Hennessy! Good gracious me! And there's the goal. Chivers. Offside. Offside flag is up against Jimmy Pierce on the far side of the field. And here's drama. It looked to me as though Pierce was forward of the ball when Chivers knocked it in, in an offside position. But now it's up to the two officials. What a moment. It stands, it's a goal. It's 1-0 Spurs. Martin Chivers, the scorer. And one's got to look back if you're a Derby supporter, painfully to that moment, that missed kick by Terry Hennessy that set up the chance. Shivers, when it came to him, couldn't miss it. McGovern. Rugby football by John Pratt. McFarlane takes it quickly. Derby haven't got much time left. Hennessy on down the line for Gemmell. And Perriman comes to him. What a tremendous game this Steve Perriman's had this afternoon. The foul given against him. 
Perriman standby. A really good, honest little blow there. No, he didn't give the foul, he gave the throw in. Webster, long. Hennessy knocks it into the box. O'Hara. Just Peters deep to knock it out. Todd. Webster. Todd again. The moment for a spark of genius. And oh, he won that back well. Handball. Peters. And he gave it. Referee Ken Burns finally gave it. For a moment, I thought he was going to say no. Handball against Peters. And now there'll be a wall of yellow shirts to face this moment. Three on the wall at the moment. Brad Perriman and Coates. Archie Gamble's number eight. Hector is there, number ten. McFarlane wants a piece of the action. O'Hare now goes into the wall. Beal is joined in. Hector leaving it for Todd, and he missed kicked, and Davis kicks it in the net! Roger Davis has equalised! It's 1-1. Just over 39 minutes of the second half gone, and Roger Davis keeps his goal game run going to four games. Four games. The free kick. A miss kick, in fact, I think, by Hector. And Roger Davis pivots and whacks it in for the equaliser. Todd. Hector. Hennessy's gone forward. Hector plays it for McFarlane. Nish is wide to the left. The chance for Nish to attack. Spurs. Davis trying it. England won it that time. Just about two and a half minutes to go. Nish, another attack by Derby. The tail's up again, now they're back in the game. Peters away, Peters playing a sort of third centre-half with Beale And England. Gemmell for McFarlane. Beal out, Jimmy Pierce, the substitute's deep back there. Everybody in that Spurs side now gathering around goalkeeper Pat Jennings to protect this 1-1 scoreline. Todd. McFarlane. Roger Davis. Still going. Little touch for McGovern. Tries it again. Scoops it in there. O'Hare. A rugby crash. Well, that was just like an all-blacks rugby. Ruck going forward then. Gemmell racing to get the corner in. Webs to the cross and another corner. About a minute and a half of this cup tie left here at the baseball ground derby. And I don't think anybody's left the ground. Archie Gemmell then with this corner. Corner number 10 in the second half for derby. Nobody knows where the ball is. Webs to handball. Tremendous appeal to the linesman, and he doesn't give it. Frankly, I think the ball was struck by a hand, but it was involuntary, the ball hitting the hand rather than a deliberate action. But nothing's given anyway. McFarlane, Gemmell, determinedly not allowing the ball out. Todd is racing back. Just about a minute left on my watch. Nish is far on the far side of the field. Hennessy's gone down the left touch line. A lot of space to work in. Hector. And now Spurs come chasing back to get at him. Hector has support this side from Webster. O'Hare. And there's Hennessy with an open goal and he missed it. Terry Hennessy. The anguish on his face then. What a moment to savour that would have been for Terry Hennessy. Still reliving the agony of the Spurs goal. The small part that he played in that. And that would have erased all his sins if he'd stuck that one in. We're in injury time now and we are not going to have any more injury time. Referee Ken Burns. 
Referee Ken Burns says that's enough of this cup tie, so it's all got to be played again. All because this man, Roger Davis, kept his goal game run going to get the equaliser here after Martin Chivers had put Spurs in front. Well, you know what I meant then about the atmosphere. What a tremendous cup tie that was. A great performance there by Spurs and, dare I say it, particularly by Pat Jennings. The replay at White Hart Lane on Wednesday, but Derby are still complaining that at least one Spurs player was offside, maybe two, when Martin Chivers scored that Tottenham goal. Jimmy. Well, from what we can see, it does look as if Spurs might have had a little bit of luck there because the linesman probably deemed that those two players were not interfering with play at the moment when Chivers shot the ball in the net. Strange, really, how things balance themselves out because you remember when Arsenal got that goal a few weeks back, John Radford, Spurs made exactly the same complaint that their defenders were thrown out because a man was in an offside position but was deemed not to be interfering with play. So let's look at the incident now and see what we, what we can untangle. You can only see the centre of the pitch. You don't see the whole of it, so we have no idea really whether there was another defender uh, between the two Spurs forwards in the six-yard box and the goal. But there you can see now, the moment that Chivers goes to strike it in, there are two of them really in offside positions in that six-yard box. But the linesman must have said that either a man was there playing them onside or they weren't interfering with play. Right, well we've really cleared the decks for cup tie action today, but we'll be back of course with a good look at your letters on the programme next week. But now we go straight to one of the bravest and best performances of the whole fourth round. Millwall's magnificent victory away to First Division Everton. A few important highlights now of that game caught for us by Granada's cameras with commentator Gerald Sinstadt, Millwall in the all-white strip. They'll fit to Harper, uh, to Buckley. Right. Buckley again. Good cross. Harper! He'll get it the second time. No, he can't. Joe Harper thwarted, and that's why they say that Brian King is one of the best goalkeepers outside the first division. Two magnificent saves there from Harper, one after the other. Styles free kick. Turned on by Kenyon and put in by Harper. Or is the referee going to disallow it? It looks very much as though he might for offside against Harper, presumably. Well, certainly it's disallowed, and that can only be for offside. We'll have a look at it again. There's the cross. Turned on, and there's Harper, and I guess it was offside. Maybe even two of them. Kendall wins it, comes loose again, and Mill Walbrook. Burnett, Steve Brown outside him, Bolland ahead and Alder, and Wood on the left. And Burnett still going. And it's a free kick because Bernard brought Burnett down. And Howard Kendall down again. Howard Kendall going over to the trainer but it was Barry Kitchener who drew the trainer's attention to it and throughout this game I think that Millwall sportsmanship has been very much to their credit referee still isn't aware that uh, the trainer is on but it looks as though it's the end of the game for Kendall Gary Jones stripping off on the bench Tommy Eggleston there, not at all sure whether this substitution should be made yet. Yes, he is. So Gary Jones, who's played only once before this season, when he came on a sub against Newcastle in September, now takes over from Howard Kendall with just under half an hour remaining. And the situation in Millwall's favour just at the moment with a free kick which Dunphy takes to Cripps it's there <laughs> Harry Cripps the Millwall veteran 31 years old scores his fifth goal of the season and one that he will really cherish a simple free kick move when Everton really hadn't got their concentration back and Cripps was allowed 
to sidle through there and nodded in. An injury to Howard Kendall, a double blow to Everton. One can only suppose that they were not really back on balance. And now it's going to be very difficult for them. We've seen that Millwall can defend. The wall will have to go back. Gary Jones waiting to take the free kick. It's come, and it's loose, and Harper can't stick it in after Buckley had hooked it across. Joe Harper has been so close in this game. Wood going up, and that's the second, and that settles it. Bollins cross, and Wood's header, 2-0. Everton go out of the cup. Millwall must now be in the fifth round. Down the right. Finally judge cross, and a lovely header from Alf Wood. His 15th goal of the season, and absolute dejection for Everton and their supporters here at Goodison Park. At the same time, a lot of delight for Millwall, a victory that surely would have had them dancing down the old Kent Road last night. Let's just catch up now on the replays for this FA Cup in the coming week. They all start at 7.30. On Tuesday, it's Crystal Palace against Sheffield Wednesday. And on Wednesday, Cardiff against Bolton, Spurs against Derby, Manchester City against Liverpool and Reading. A tremendous day they had yesterday with that 1-1 draw at Sunderland. It's Reading against Sunderland. So that's it. We should be back, of course, with On the Ball and the Big Match next Sunday. We thought in the next few weeks we'd leave you with a goal that could well be a candidate for our Golden Goals competition coming up in a couple of months' time. We're better to start today than with John Craven's goal for Crystal Palace against Leeds United because it was John's goal yesterday at Sheffield Wednesday that kept Palace in the Cup and really overall made it a very good weekend in the Cup for London. Forward into the space there for Rogers. Can he get it? No. Craven, can he? Yes, he can. Craven. Oh, God!